Welcome to the Indigo League, where trainers grow and bond with their Pokemon to become the very best and prove themselves unbeatable. We are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high, no we won't fall, because we are unbeatable. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. Uh, we once again find ourselves in Pallet Town after a extremely stressful last couple of episodes where our trainers found themselves up against members of the Blue Rockets, an organization that ended up coming to being after Team Rocket had been disbanded 20-something years ago. These trainers found themselves in the Poké Center on the first day of the new season of the Kanto uh, Indigo League. They found themselves being the only line of defense between the Pokemon Center and these rockets and any Pokemon that may have been within. Um, traveling from the security room where they had been getting spare supplies when the power went out from a vicious storm going over the Poke Center, they managed to take out one of the Team Rocket members, uh, confront the boss of the group, a an officer known as Lavender, um, defeating its Dragonair. After uh, cleaning up the last of the scum that is the Blue Rockets, they managed to tie them all up, bring them to the front of the Pokemon Center, uh, sit Ooh, down in the media uh, like contact center, not the actual media room because that was destroyed in the attack. Um, but our trainers find themselves amongst the different uh, telecommunication commu uh, computers in the uh, teleconference room for the Pokemon Center. The Never three did of you get to finish are... watching Detective Pikachu. No, you didn't get to finish watching Detective Pikachu. Um, but the three of you do find yourselves seated in this room. You know that Vermilion is off helping Nurse Joy, making sure to put back all of the supplies that had been stolen by the four rockets who were present. Mm -hmm. You're currently trying to decide who to contact. One of you wanted to contact your parents. Nurse Joy had already talked about contacting the police as one of the officers, uh, sorry, one of the grunts, Millie, had let you all in on the knowledge that this was not the only place attacked during the storm in Pallet Town. Also attacked were some of the more popular trainer clubs in town, as well as the Pallet City Gym. So, with that, the three of you are there. What are you guys doing? So, I'm going to go ahead and I will move over to one of those little communication booths uh, and start looking at my uh, Poke gear and then looking back and trying to get it to sync up. But because if it's the older, it's the older model, it takes a couple more seconds for it to sync over uh, to the communication to get my contact info to upload, uh, and then reach out to uh, to my home and see who answers. Okay, so you enter in. Um, do you enter in the personal line or the line for the cornucopia daycare? Um, I will. Hmm, what time is it right now? It's still in the morning. Uh, this is this is like around noon to two o'clock. It's somewhere in that like. Uh, vague area I'll given that it's kind of hard to personal line because I don't want to hold up the, the business line okay. uh, and leave a message um, need be. for personal lines are you calling your mother or your father Ooh, it is the first day of the season so your father is probably not going to pick up if you call that's fair let's go let's go with mom then yeah, yeah. okay uh, with that you go ahead um, typing in the personal line for your mother and you wait for a few rings after maybe three to four seconds of ringing, there is a click, and the large monitor in front of you uh, shows what looks like a an empty room. Um, there are countertops in the background. It looks like almost more of like a, like a hospital countertop almost. There are like large water tanks where you can see floating in them shapes that aren't lit at the moment. Um, and there is a chair, and you hear, one moment, I'm coming around. Gotcha. Take your time. And you see a woman come around the corner that you recognize to be your mother. Um, she is about middling height from this uh, camera angle, uh, darker skin tones, a uh, couple of like facial scars that, you know, she picked up from her years out in the field. Um, she has this like very like voluminous hair that kind of come as she comes around the corner that kind of like bounces as she walks. Um, and she's got like a tiny like spectacles on the end of her nose and her lab jacket over her shoulders. Oh hi! You made it to you made it to Pallet. Yeah, made How's it. How's everything going? It is going. There's uh, some stuff that's happened, uh, all very suddenly. Um, but uh, well, you made it to the to the yeah, laboratory, all so, right. The, yeah. the the Pokeball's said fine. The, yep, said it and everything. Said the whole thing. Um, okay. That uh, do we have to say that for every delivery? That Oak didn't seem like he was prepared for 
That it's a happened. tradition. We have to do it. Okay. All right. It just, I don't know if that was something that Dad had made. Did you say that like off in the off in the distance? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, was that the trainer? Yeah. Do you want to meet her? Yeah. Uh, where are you calling from? This number isn't isn't the the lab number. Yeah. So, like I said, a lot of stuff happened. Um, we uh, were at the lab, and then a storm suddenly came out uh, of the blue and just kind of hit the town. We weren't really expecting it. Well, it is We'd, January. So we decided to go to the Pokemon Center, uh, and then the power went out. We thought, that's weird. So Nurse Joy went to go turn the power back on. We walked up to get some of the extra space heaters. And when the power came back on, we saw that the security feeds came back, and there were uh, apparently blue rockets that were uh, doing some shenanigans. I mean, you know, they're up to no good. Uh, With that there's kind of like a shadow that passes over your mom's face as like her shoulders square up. And you see like in that moment, Seth, you see the like mom that you came home to for most of your life growing up of like the ranger who was out in the fields dealing with people like this constantly. And her, her, her kind of like cadence and voice shifts a little bit to almost be a bit more clipped. There were rockets at the poker center. Yes, were uh, well, technically they're still here, but we, we've, we took care of them. They're just tied up in the corner. We're waiting for... The... You took care of them? Uh, I mean, one Where of them... Where were the officers? Where were the Jennies? Uh, they weren't here. Uh, apparently, it's, it's it was more than just the Pokemon Center that was here. Uh, I think they also went for the gym and some other locations. How long ago was this? And you see, like, she reaches over and, like, picks up a notepad and starts writing. Um, okay, and then I just start going through all the details of, like, it was this time. Uh, so it said, uh, what was it? Uh, it said 1 o'clock here, so it was 10 o'clock now, close to noon. So, and then just start going through all the time, uh, <laughs> explaining everything. Um, three hours. And then uh, from there, uh, I'll also let her know, like, um, but, I mean, like, we're, we're fine, though. We're good. Uh, like, there was some damage, and I'll kind of, like, pan over to where you can see the detective Pikachu that keeps looping because the yeah, just playing through the ceiling the in the hallway. Scene. Uh, so it's not really going. Any they further. opened fire in a Pokemon center. Um, no, no. So, okay. Remember how that Squirtle um, <laughs> knew that one move. Oh yeah. With the panning over Gavin and Corinne would also be in frame at this point. Uh, and Corinne's ashamed face would also be on camera. Do you have Squirtle out? Yeah, Hi, Seth's always. mom. Hi. These, these are, trainers are were with you? Yeah, these are people I've I've met. Uh that's Corinne, that's uh who, who had the squirtle um that uh requested. Uh and that's Gavin. Um these uh were some awesome folks I met at the Pokemon Center, but um no, th- this was from the that the squirtle um the move that uh squirtle knew from hatching. Uh oh. it kind of went a bit m- more than expected. But hey, we're good. And we we made it out. Uh, and then um, uh, Bowie, and I'll pop Bowie out. So Bowie took care of the uh, the leader. Um, in like honestly, one blast. Honest, like that hydro pump that really really close quarters took him out pretty quickly. And it was and you and the police are already there, and they've already taken away the rockets. Uh, no, they're still here. Uh, we're waiting for them to get here. Uh, again, like I said, the rest of the town, I think, might also be under attack. They said that this was... What do you least, mean the rest of the town? Um, well, they said that they were going after, like, everybody here. So they went to... Who, who said that? Um, I think it was Millie. Millie, you said that, right? <laughs> I'll just look over towards Millie and be like, that was everybody? No, they're, they're, they're still in the front, like, front Poké Center room. Like, they're like... They a probably, couple rooms down the hall. They probably, yeah. yeah, that was, yeah, Millie, Millie said it, right guys? Yeah, Millie. Yes, they, that was one of the, uh, one of the grunts had said that, uh, was their plan, uh, was to, like, disrupt communication, okay. and then... Uh, I'll be there in six hours. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, okay. There's um, a storm. I need to come, I need to come get you and bring you home, right? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a, there's a storm out, and, like, it's, I'm fine, I can just wait a, a minute while this gets settled. I think I should be fine. This is okay. So you're still planning on walking home? Um, I mean, we'll we can escort. We'll yeah, we'll we take, can. I mean, we're probably we're gonna come there anyway. Okay. We'll, well, we'll how just... many how many badges do you guys get in last season? So about that, um, <laughs> Fun fact. they um, are uh, <laughs> kind of green uh, in in regards to the badge scene um, like, with like three Emerald. brand new trainers. I wouldn't but, say like but brand, three. brand new necessarily. We and three. I you know is I a mean, magic number. There's 
an argument to be made for street smarts. We did we did just take out a bunch of blue rockets. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in the camera just to myself. <laughs> like, all right, mom, I'm gonna level with you. I think we will be fine. I think we'll be fine. Um, I are you? I'm um, like, we'll be only okay. traveling with two companions. If you're gonna travel back, I would feel much more comfortable if you at least had a fourth, or if I I could come get all of you. If that's your hold up, I no, don't. No, it's it's fine. I I appreciate the concern. I I promise we'll be okay. Um, we are going to I. <sighs> Even recommending, even before I was going to leave, you know how towns can get that have gyms in them where it gets crowded, and especially here, whenever the season starts, I was going to recommend they probably went the other way. So if we do come back home, we might just take the long way and go near Cinnabar. You're going to go Cinnabar route? I, that's at least what I would think. I don't know. I haven't really talked about it with them because uh, like three hours ago, I didn't expect this to happen. Um, so lots kind of happened very, very suddenly. But that's at least what I would well, imagine. You just said a storm happened. Route. It would have come from the south. It would have come from from that ocean route. Yeah, there will. There may be a bunch of angry Gyarados in that area. Then absolutely not. Absolutely well, well, not. Well, well, they were probably angered by the rockets. Um, zoom that the camera is back out. Just keep yeah, talking. the Gyarados don't really care who <laughs> who angered them. Look, you kids seem wonderful, and I'm so glad that Seth has made friends on his first day out. But I am not comfortable with a bunch of greenhorns going through somewhere that is potentially full of angry Gyarados and blue rockets. Now, I'll admit, we don't deal with blue rockets up here very often, but if they're anything like the crimson rockets, then I am not comfortable with that. They're not quite as bad as the crimson rockets. And uh, Gavin knows a sea captain, so that could help us with the Gyarados if we happen to run in, not that we're trying to run into them but like it, you know he, we, he we should be fine we we on our trip to from Sinnoh we came across this huge tentacruel and he he uh he was pretty good at handling that so if you're going to go on the cinnabar route i don't feel comfortable with just greenhorns going you need to take somebody who knows what they're doing and will travel with you. We can we can um, ask. But Mrs. Uh, Seth's mom, would you be comfortable with Please, us? Miss Wake. Miss Wake. Sorry. I've me. never heard it Ms. said like that. Mrs. Wake, would you mind would you feel better if we didn't take that route? If we took the land path instead? I'm going to be honest, it's only because I trust my son that I'm not already on my way. We could ask them. I don't really feel comfortable us. with anyone traveling, but especially if you're going to Cinnabar, you need to take somebody with you. There is no Poke Center out on that island. There are no resources for kids like you who this is. It sounds like, have you even gotten your first gym badge yet? No. It was really swamped. We, I only just. This afternoon. I had to get my trainer card before I was able, allowed to, to do anything. So that was what was giving me a hold up. Well, like, I have a trainer card for Sinnoh. I only just got here. There is a trainer yeah, that's here that way. helped us with the the uh, event here that we haven't talked to. They're helping Nurse Joy at the moment, but we could talk to them and see if they're willing to go with us. I'm going to ask for a combined charm roll. Oh, God. Each <laughs> of you are going to roll your charm die. And you guys, okay. this is a really difficult ask because you guys volunteered information that she didn't necessarily need to have. This isn't, <laughs> oh, could this be considered yes. a persuasion roll? <laughs> it could be, but that's for if we're doing one on one. This is just a combine a combined charm roll for the three of you. Okay. Um, so what this is going to be is the three of you are going to add your total numbers together, and you are trying to hit. I'm going to say you'll be successful at a 16, <laughs> enthusiastically successful at a 20. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I rolled a four. I got a seven. Okay, so that's 11. And then two, so that's a 13. <laughs> I could have exploded, but I didn't. I don't feel comfortable with you guys traveling to Cinnabar on your own. However, I would be okay if you skipped Cinnabar for now. I could come and get you and take you, bring you back here, or I would be willing to take you to Seafoam. But Cinnabar for brand new trainers, I'm not comfortable with that. I mean, you might be able to come here right away. I can't tell you. 
what to do. Because I'm not your mom, I can't tell you where to go, but I do not feel comfortable for my son going there. I just want to warn you, if you're planning on flying here, there's there's a really bad storm outside that you may not want to come for a little bit. That's what you guys had mentioned. But, trust me, I have more than a little bit of experience dealing with storms and flight. Okay. So, your mom's really cool. you yeah. are not coming. Unless I'm taking you to Seafoam or bringing you back here to Cerulean, I will stay here. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit you real quick. Uh, what What do you guys want to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's what do you, awesome. What do you, what do you think? Uh, my what, mom would kick my ass if I Do you guys want, uh, want to walk specifically? Or because, I mean, if you if we go back to uh, Cerulean so far away, and then it's like we're going to have to walk all the way back here anyway. Like, do we, do we need to? I mean... And Corinne pulls out a map. <laughs> uh, all the way to Cerulean. I need an answer in like five seconds. I muted her, and it's already been for like a lot oh longer. You can see she's done the away. mom crossed arms things. Oh, with like the I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm just oh gonna God. pretend it's lagging because of the watch. So please, we, just like we don't I, have too much I, time. Could we? Could we begin? Could we begin from Cerulean? I don't. I'm just gonna pretend like I'm gifting and just like keep loop Probably. for a second. Yeah, yeah, you, this is yeah, really bad. <laughs> And I'll, just, I'll I'm gonna unmute and be like, yeah, I think we're just. Can you hear? Me? It was this Oak said this was like a really old model, and I thought it was cool because I again appreciate every other gift you guys give me. But um, oh, I, I think here, we're let just me reset gonna... the call real quick, and okay. she clicks end call and guys, starts please, yes, quickly it change out. your please. name to reconnecting and then join the call. <laughs> Wait, what is <laughs> happening? Who knows that? Who knows that? <laughs> what? I. Okay, so we're walking. Just... We're walking. Oh, okay. Answered oh. again. <laughs> is that better? Can. I'm moving. Can you see my hands? Yes, I can see your hands. Okay, cool. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna walk, um, and we'll okay. head up. Uh, just basically back the way we came, and maybe come you're in. You're gonna through. go to Viridian. Yeah, if that's okay. And you're gonna go through Viridian Forest and Mount Moon with new trainers. And potentially, yes. if we can convince a friend, maybe who has done a season or two. I, I don't. Do you remember what fruit? I mean, if 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 Route One is too dangerous and Route Twenty One is also too dangerous, is your plan for us to just stay here in Pallet Town? As you ask that question, Gavin, um, there is that there's a little bit of insight into the fact that this is a mother who just found out that her son was involved with a terrorist attack. Everything yeah. <laughs> looks too dangerous for her right now. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, I never said she was being rational in okay. this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I made it here in one piece. Like Boo and I are fine. I even I even got an egg uh, on the way here. Um, this isn't helping Corinne the kids. I'll tell you that story very hard later. Not um, to look at the bandages that she put all over his bleeding ass legs. But here. I think oh, we'll yeah. be fine. I think we're good. Uh, I, it's I don't want you to take you away from the cornucopia. I'm sure there's a lot of people calling, and with Dad being at the gym, he's not there to help 100 percent of the time. Like I don't. Your dad's at the take take time. Don't worry about it. We'll be good. It's a okay thing of the past. Didn't I mean Spur? You can even ask them. I when they dropped me off, I was peak, peak ready to go. Everything was good, right? They could vouch for me. You're It'll doing that thing where you talk too much when you're lying. He, what went wrong on your trip? It, so, no, he was in great condition. For, yeah, no, no, for no, no, the no. trip. Um, solid. Yeah, this is. I think more about the egg thing. So. When I was the on the way through the forest, um, uh, it was good. Like, honestly, you would you would have loved the view uh, with just how the like the river was right there. Um, but there was a uh, and, and there was a, just a, a one arbok um, that was there um, that uh, really it's, it was like on its last leg. But Bowie and I did our our darndest and. Um, uh, yeah, and we kind of got ambushed by like a Dotrio, and then they started fighting, and then they fell into the river, and then I ran away with Bowie, and we camped up in a tree. Uh, but then the Dotrio never came back for the egg, so I picked it up, and now I have it, because uh, I don't think it lived. But it's in it's in great condition. Like followed all the procedures. It's fine. That's like the only thing that happened, though, in the like, and I'm here and I made it out. And that's that was one person. So imagine me with two other people. 
like we'll be we'll be fine honestly i think we'll be okay i can pay for you guys to take the the pidgeot taxi somewhere if you need to go there if we need to i will let you know but i think i think we're good to just you know walk it out uh, I know Gavin has like a listen, step and you see, like she's doing the mom thing of realizing she may have overstepped slightly. <sighs> this is this is your guys' journey. If you guys really had your heart set on going south, it is no issue for me to send someone to take you or take you to Seafoam. Seafoam City is a very safe and wonderful place. If you yeah. really had your heart set on going south, and and Seafoam would be great. That is ideally a place to go to, but my thought process of going to Cinnabar was Corinna just got this wordle in Cinnabar as a fire type gym. So where else to kind of like get the first win, but, and then a fire type. And then you have Seafoam right there next to it, which if we're going to be at Cinnabar, we're bound to catch a fire type Pokemon. That yeah, would help I can't us. really thinking strategically. I can't go to an ice gym straight away. I, Ava, Ava won't right. manage. Well, but it's fine. We um, can we can go north. It we can I'm, circle I'm back so around. Good with going north, and Mrs. Seth, uh, Mrs. Wake, I would never allow us all to get in really big trouble intentionally. It seems like that Squirtle went to a good trainer. So, um, what are your names again? I'm sorry you said them, but I was worrying. Um, what were your names? I'm Gavin Newman. Okay. Corinne Willis. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you too. Um, Alicia Wake. I am. Uh, I am one of the two founders of the Cornucopia Daycare and um, Cerulean Gym. The coolest gym on the planet. Also, Seth's mom. Once again. Um, Woo. So cool. If you're gonna come north, that's fine. Um, keep me updated. Let me know where you're going. Okay. I have to go let Finn know that this happened, and I'm going to see if I can contact anybody at the Pallet Town Police Department, because the fact that it's already been some time and you haven't heard back yet is very frustrating. And you see she kind of sits up straight and does, like, the, like, mom adjust the shoulders thing. Ooh. Of like she is about to go Karen on somebody's ass. Um, yeah. Well, we, there's. Uh, I think there's Joy's calling us now. We're, we're gonna. I'll call you when we get more information mm-hmm. and just let Dad know. Um, uh, won a cool battle against a person with a point blank hydro pump. He'll be proud of that. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> let the thing hang up. You you, oh. you use hydro pump. Boom, the the thing calls. <laughs> oh, he'll appreciate it. It's cool. It was fun. All right. Well. <laughs> Um, so I guess we can go north if we need to, but it seemed like south she didn't necessarily say no a fifth time, so if we do... Your mom is almost as scary as my mom. I would argue oh, what? maybe was, scary. That wasn't scary. She's fine. Um, that was just uh, the... Yeah, she was a Pokemon ranger for multiple years. That's kind of why that like, oh, your mom's really cool. She kind of goes back into work mode, but she's retired for like years now. But sometimes she still thinks she can just like walk into an, an officer Jenny's location and say, "Hey, you need to be doing this by that." And it's like, "Mom, you, you don't, you can't do that. That's not how this works." Uh, your that's family is the do. coolest family. Do you get that? Uh, no. I mean, I appreciate it, but I <laughs> otherwise it's pretty normal. I think for most. Not anyway, most. what are we doing? I tried calling Poppy, but she didn't answer, so I don't know what that means necessarily. Well, did she really leave the Poppy? lab, or was she still at the lab? I mean, she was supposed to be at the lab. Hmm. But if she somehow found out what's going on, I imagine she's hopefully not doing something reckless. Cool. Um, Gavin, did you need to check in with your family to let them know? Because I am I doubt this isn't going to be like uh, pretty local news. It might spread out pretty far. You know, a larger scale. 
I think that you know it's probably you know what time is it in Sinnoh right now? Like, uh, Sinnoh is like like I think like an eight hour difference. It's like you you went very far, so it's gonna be like night right now in Sinnoh. You know they're probably asleep, and I don't want to just I don't want to worry them because you know they, it's not like they can come over here. My, my mom can't fly over here, so um, I think it's probably best to just leave it and then. I'll call her at some point. I just got here. I don't want her telling me getting on a boat and coming back. Sure, yeah. They valid. I I hear you there. Um, so we find Joy, we maybe talk to Vermilion to see if they want to come with us. Uh I can if we uh, do plan to head maybe south or get on the get on a, get on the uh on the blower with Captain Nolan and see if he's if he's uh on board with taking us to Cinnabar. Cool. Okay. Gavin's on ship chartering duty, uh, and we will find them wherever they may be. All right, break. There's Joy! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You hear, yes, as as she comes, like, in her heels around the corner. Um, Jog closer to her. Um, Still no word from anyone else? Have we been able to get... I did manage to make it through to the police uh, center, and they're sending over some officers soon. Um, luckily we have some river rafts, uh, and airboats for when we have to do things on the river to the South. So they're using that to get around town right now. The flooding has gotten a bit worse. And she, she points out, out down, like down into the street and you can see there's a solid standing foot of water out on the streets, like enough to where people are having to use boats to get around the city right is now. The, is the Pokemon center like raised off the ground? Yeah, it is. It luckily there's that like the like the cement steps that go up to the center so that it can be like easily seen by anyone. Okay. A lot of the businesses nearby that are on ground level oh, are not doing as hot. Oh yeah. my gosh. What Oof. have what did they have any news of the gym? Not anything they were willing to share at the moment, but they did mention that there had been attacks at the gym and at the Weedleways as well. Um I suspect they're going to be leading some trainers here. Um, whoever has Pokemon to be treated will be brought here. I They mentioned taking the trainers who weren't as fortunate to other locations to hold them over for the night. Um, but so we should be expecting visitors. Um, I was actually wondering if you guys could help me with that while we're, while we're just waiting for the police. Of course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Okay. Over the next like 45 minutes to an hour, what Nurse Joy has you guys doing is she hands you some like emergency caution tape, some signs to put up around the hallway that leads up to the cinema room. Because really, the the only things that were majorly damaged um, in the fight was one of the two hallways that leads back to the cafeteria because you guys came into one to to fight the Pidgeot. And then the other side is where the Dragonite got, got dist- or the Dragonair got destroyed into the ceiling. Um and then there is like some big cracks in the training grounds, but honestly, she has you guys go upstairs and pull out cots from the uh, from the spare like supply closet, so that in case there's more than the rooms they have available, you guys can put out cots in the training room. Um, and over the next forty five minutes, you guys help Nurse Joy. She's extremely grateful over that time. But after almost an hour, you hear a very loud like noise coming from outside in front of the gym or in front of the the center i apologize i'll finish putting up the uh, like an engine sound night rescheduled sign (laughs) back on the wall and then head back downstairs yeah (laughs) the movie night rescheduled (laughs) uh it is similar to an engine sound uh because you do hear like a like like a like a repeating like diesel engine going um but as you kind of step through the hallway um you hear Nurse Joy say, oh, they're here. And you look out in front, and there is a giant airboat out in front of the, the center, mm-hmm. like one of the ones with the big fan on the back, and that's oh, the noise Half-Life. that you're hearing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, doo, oh. doo, 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 doo. and they're being brought up. And you see that there are police officers in ponchos. Um, uh, they, It seems like there's probably like five or six on the boat, one of which piloting, the other one's all sitting there as they're slowly getting out into ankle-deep water and climbing the steps up to the Poké Center. Um, after, yeah, you open the doors after they step Come through, on, come on, get in, get in, get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the storm at this point has settled. It's just the remaining water that's flooded up from the river that's really messing with everybody. Um, it's still cloudy. It's still thundery. There's still like a cold breeze as you open the doors for everyone. Um, but leading through, um, immediately you see an officer, um, that steps through. She has like blue green hair, 
um, with like a slight build, maybe like five four, like very short. Um, this is not Officer Jenny who steps through. It, the based off of like their clothing, it seems like they're some sort of higher ranking officer, but not quite a Jenny. Um, as they step through, <sighs> Joy, uh, and she steps up, uh, and Nurse goes, "Yes, um, we have taken um, these trainers have helped me take the rockets into into captivity, and we're holding them in the basement right now. Um, but your officers will find them down there. Good." You heard her. And she points to four of the other officers, varying heights, statures, um, and genders. And they they walk down the – immediately, they know where they're going. They know where the basement is. Police officers are very familiar with the Poké Center. They get called anytime there's any sort of scuffle or anything like that. Um, immediately heading down, and the officer turns to the three of you. I'm Officer Jan. I will be here if you uh, need to talk about anything, and I'm going to be debriefing each of you individually joy already sent ahead information on the three of you and your fourth uh and she, she looks around and you see that vermilion does end up walking around the corner um and i'm going to be debriefing each of you taking your statements which we're going to go ahead and do here because the center or the uh station is a little overrun right now does that make sense it's overrun well we brought in a lot of rockets today. How's the gym? I would be willing to talk to you about that after I get whatever information you guys can offer me to anyone else who might need it. Does that sound fair? I'll answer a few of your questions once you've answered a few of mine. Sure. It seems like the vibe this officer is getting is genuinely like giving is like help the community and not like dickhead. Like yeah. that's need to know. It's like. You guys might have information that helps other people, and she wants to get to that first. Sure. Makes sense. Okay. Um, all right, then. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull you in one by one. If you, Joy, is the is the teleconference room available? Yes, though, careful stepping around outside. I still haven't swept up the chunks of ceiling on the floor. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll go there. I'll have the rest of you sit in the cafeteria, and I'll pull you in one by one. Sounds good. Um, all right. Does anyone want to go first? Sure. Gavin, you are pulled into a room with Officer Jan, and she sits down um, and takes out a uh, voice recorder, sets that on the table, um, and also pulls out a notepad. And you guys are, like, literally, like, two seats over from where you guys were just talking and being interrogated by another very scary lady. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's a little familiar um, as she begins to ask you questions. Now, instead of us going through a protracted scene of you answering all of her questions, is there any information that you choose to leave out or elaborate on that would be outside of exactly what you guys had had gone through? Mm. Don't lie about the waffle maker. You did take it. Well, just waffles. Didn't take the full I didn't waffle. Take maker. I was I was had bringing your hand. waffle maker down no, from the emergency waffle making I'm, supplies. I'm, I'm, hey, it's not it's not my story. It's <laughs> I was bringing it down so we could all enjoy waffles. I don't have it on my person what anymore. What's the relation to the waffle maker? Yeah, and you and the waffle maker was a terrorist. <laughs> the, waffle maker, the waffle maker was present before the terrorists entered the building. Oh, okay. I like to imagine the vi- the vibe of Gavin's like testimony is you know that clip of the surfer going and it comes down like but and then it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was like very if much we could <laughs> refrain from so too idiot. many hand gestures. If we could if we could bring down the onomatopoeia perhaps and just give me an account of everything that happens. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it is Ava would just like fucking right under it and then just kapow right in the middle. Oh, it was crazy. And Ava's your Starly? Yeah. All right. And you said you, you, the three of you managed to take down two of these rockets. Where were the other two that you've captured? Where were they taken? They were in the gym. There was this guy called Graham who, uh, who, um, <laughs> what? You didn't tell me not to say that. There was this guy called Graham who had this Umbreon. <laughs> Um, he tried to mug me earlier today, and <laughs> you mark. You oh, mark. And did did the did the officer that you reported this to oh, earlier give man. you a, uh, a a report number so that I could link those two? No, I. It's been a really uh, busy day. Episode I was, one I was where headed, you said I'm not going to be a narc. I was headed <laughs> to. <laughs> I was I headed to it. the lab because uh, Professor Oak was going to hook me up with a trainer card for for the region. Um. So I was going to do that first, and then I was going to come and report it to the police. But then the storm okay. hit, so I didn't have time. Do you want to file a separate report? 
You know, I mean, like, I didn't actually get mugged. They didn't take my stuff. At what point okay. does it become a crime? <laughs> At the point Stop. where they threaten and or assault you. Sure, I'll do a report. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. You totally narc. Sounds good. Uh, do you just describe Graham or do you describe the other, like, four people that were there? Yeah, I totally Graham will remember this. <laughs> okay. Full <Sounds> disclosure. <laughs> hey. Check back in 53 episodes. Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna come on. Even in prison. Um, okay. Uh, all right. She finishes taking your statement. There's nothing that you were neglecting to tell her or anything like that? No. If anything, I over-explain everything. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. I'll take the next person. She calls out as Gavin goes walking out. I look over to the other two and I just throw up rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Vermilion goes... I'll go. And oh. they just get up. And, <laughs> totally they ready. Just, and they just ignore your rock, paper, scissors entirely. Next, um, very next much time, no yeah. nonsense. It's cool. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But that does leave Gavin coming out of the room and the two of you there. If there's anything you wanted to speak about, if not, we can move forward. <sighs> I'm really feeling say? waffles, guys. Um, I mean, I just told them everything that happened. Everything? Was there something I was supposed to not tell the officer of the law? N- n- no. No, not necessarily. Then I told I them just... everything. Great. Cool. That was awkward. Can I get an can I empathy roll that? Uh I'm not like I'm not trying what? to do the lie detector. I just want to know what the vibe yeah, is coming no, off. I would I would allow I would allow an empathy roll for the vibe, assuming that Corinne is not willing to just tell you what the vibe Corinne is putting off is. If if the if Kenna would like to tell you how Corinne's oh, like visibly feeling, then there would be no role necessary. So Corinne, do you have? Are you trying to mask your feelings at the moment, or are you just open with them? And if you are open with them, what are they? No, we're solidly masking. Oh, okay, sounds good. Go ahead and roll me an empathy roll. Uh, I'm going to say at this point, difficulty of seven. Seventeen. Sorry, eighteen. 17 plus Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, my, uh, it, it, my int is my highest school. <laughs> okay. With that, Corinne, what are the kind of emotions that are being masked that might peek out from under this mask? The vibe is sweating, nervous, w- intensely worried. Now, when we say worried, do, does it look worried for yourself or worried for someone else? Because those are different emotions. Both. Okay. That's the vibe you get off of Corinne as you're... As your, mentioning all of these things is everything okay are you are you like in witness protection or something what no uh my name is definitely corinne willows i don't like the way you said that (laughs) i kind of do (laughs) you're pretty confident (laughs) mine's definitely gavin newman now you see i don't know you don't hesitate in the last name that's where you get messed up No, it's fine. I'm fine. As you guys are talking, people do start to file into the Pokemon Center. Um, It starts as a couple of people and you hear them like loudly chatting. And it seems like like the voices are tense, but like kind of excited, kind of like cheerful. As you see two people come around the corner, um, they are soaking wet um, individuals about your age in uh, in trainer's clothes uh, and if you listen for more than a half a second, you hear them recounting some sort of battle. Um, and over the course of the next like 15, 20 minutes as Vermilion is being interviewed, maybe 20 people start to come through the Poke Center uh, over that time as police are starting to slowly bring trainers who need, who this Pokemon need medical attention here. Um, can I get an empathy roll from each of you? Difficulty five. Mm-hmm. I will say when Corinne starts seeing so many people coming through the Pokemon Center, she's probably going to hop up, not walk too far away from the interview room, but start mm-hmm. helping and delegating. She's making a run for it. It sounds good. Yeah, you're, you're, you're training <laughs> with, with medical stuff. Okay, so I see an eight from Gavin. Ooh, I exploded. Seven. Twelve. As people are walking in, it is very obvious to you that there are two groups of people coming in. Um, even if they're being transported in groups of like three or four, there are people who are tense and kind of excited, kind of cheerful, recounting battles. And then there are people who are solemn and shell-shocked 
And it's very much you can tell that these are the two groups of people who either came from the Weedle Ways, where people are cheerfully talking about a successful battle, fighting off rockets, and people who came from the gym, where it is anything but. Um, if you would like to per- chance talk to one of those individuals or try and learn anything about what happened, because you're currently not aware of how either of those things went. Um, I see a Gavin hand. Can I go and make a big stack of waffles for all the people from the gym? Sure, absolutely, you could do that. Um, That's really sweet. <laughs> the waffle maker is one of those really annoying ones that it takes like a minute and a half to make two waffles. So you stand like, there for like 15 minutes. I go upstairs minutes, and I get yeah. like four of them and I get them all going at the same time. Okay, sounds good. Um, in that time, <laughs> Seth, you will be pulled into your interview. Is there anything that you do or do not mention uh, to the officer? Um, so, yeah, I would tell them the uh, Primeape and the Magnazone were taken. But aside from that, I don't think there were any other uh, things that we needed to, like, specific uh, – <laughs> any other things that we needed to specifically hide from them because there's – I mean – we just started this, so. Uh, well, Gavin okay. already spilt the beans. So I don't. What beans? What beans? <laughs> Why are we defending this guy? What guy? What guy? What guy you knocked on. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, then your interview goes pretty quickly. Um, Corinne, it gets to the point where Nurse Joy does actually ask you to step away for a moment because she is very used to running this Poké Center on her own, and she's in like overdrive mode of like it's it. You've already helped as much as you can. Yep. Um, kind of thing. Um, Chansey and her are like are a team of just like barely passing each other in hallways, things like that. Like they're very well trained to work together. I do want to add back to my um, my interview. Uh, yeah, a lot of it was me explaining everything that was happening there, and then the other part of it was Totodile uh, and or was Bowie giving his part of it. Uh, Bowie explaining to Totodile, Totodile, on his shoulders at one point in the lab, and then he saw something else came through. yeah absolutely um gavin you end up getting to prepare like 20 something uh waffles and bringing them around to the people because of the like 20 people who've pulled into the pokemon center maybe five or six are really looking like sad and you end up starting to just like slide them um in front of people i like get loads of different sources and i put them on my belt like a utility belt of sources and he's like you want chocolate okay i got you <laughs> here you do go like a little do like the little um what is it the whipped cream like smiley face with the two like <laughs> yeah i've got a, I've got a pouch <laughs> of like i've got a pouch of like m&ms and things i'm just like you want i'm gonna go, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it seems like a, a like lot a of their bartender a lot of the very sad people you go up and talk to about this like you're like you want an m&ms it's mostly that like vibe of like I guess, and like the just like the shell shock <laughs> look. Um, but like several of the people who ha- who are like happier and like cheerful start like lining up and be like, "No, dude, I want the caramel syrup. Give me that." Uh, get and, out of my way. Um, <laughs> eventually, eventually, you get to the last like couple waffles and you slide them over to a trainer who is kind of pulled off to the to the corner, um, wearing a red like athletic band, um, and uh, he has like a white and green polo. That is like one of those like workout polos, you know, those awful, like awful shirts that like don't look good on anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's kind of just leaned up and you find you see that he is asleep against the wall. <laughs> hey, hey, big guy. Uh, you you shake his shoulder and as your hand like reaches shoulder, you go, oh, this is big guy. Because your hand doesn't reach all the way around the shoulder as you feel the muscles underneath your hand. Hey. Um, <laughs> and, he, and he shifts his oh, I... <clears throat> Sorry, I must have, I must have fallen asleep. Um, uh, oh, uh, hello. Who, who are you? Uh, are you I'm working? Gavin. I just wanted to check in because you fell asleep, stood up. Like that's impressive. Uh, would you like a waffle? Um, yeah, yeah, I could do with a waffle. And you see, this guy is like a few years older than you, like maybe like 24. Um, very well built as, as you see now that like he was leaning. So his stature was kind of hidden, but now you see, he's like easily like six, three, six, four, um, um, like giant, like watermelon biceps. Uh, and he, he kind of, he kind of like scoots uh, down into one of the, one of the chairs at, at the tables. Um, sorry, I was, it's been a long day. I should go find a room after this. That's all good. I just wanted to check. I didn't want you, you falling over. Oh no, it's fine. Um, sorry, who, you, you said your name was what? Gavin. <clears throat> Gavin Newman. Gavin. Oh, I... That voice William, break was totally uh, in character. Valid. <laughs> and he reaches out his, like, his, like, mitten, like, giant hands. 
like as a handshake uh as <laughs> as as you take his fingers incredibly soft incredibly lotioned um uh, not what you would have expected at all it's uncomfortable uh uh he goes um sorry you another trainer then yeah oh. <laughs> were you at the the ways or were you at the gym i was right here um we had a, oh. a small group of team rock of uh, the blue rockets attacked and you know we handled them took him captive you see he immediately just goes like full like depressed like shoulders down like a tear just single tear like goes down his cheek i mean you know nothing like yeah. what you guys had to fight you guys were so brave and nobody at the gym was brave what are you talking about the gym leader went down in two moves <gasps> yikes so i guess they got badges <laughs> Dare you! <laughs> you fucking dickhead! <laughs> Wait, enough for the edit. I'm Seth cutting to your face in- solo for that. Thank God, Seth Ooh. isn't in this scene. Uh- <laughs> yeah, fuck, Seth. <laughs> Damn, you're gonna rock your shit oh right man. there. I'm just playing, dog. <laughs> Wishbone. Fuck. Wishbone got hands. <laughs> you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. You don't even know who Wishbone is. The dog. Well, but um, nobody at that gym was brave. No, we we gave up after the gym leader went down. Oh, that's not good. Luckily, Rockets thought my Caterpie was too weak to steal, so I still have a Pokemon. But my Mankey's gone. Oh, I'm so sorry about your Mankey. Wait. No, it was a primate that got stolen earlier. Yeah, it was a primate that was here. Yeah. That's a, that is a Pokemon that is extremely popular in this area because, like, two routes over, it's very yeah. common. I'm so sorry about your manky. Oh, you know, I'm sure the 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 cops are going to work really hard and try and get everyone's Pokemon back. Yeah, maybe. Thanks for the waffles. And he but, like he stands up with his with his paper plate. You like? Do you like? Um, what what sauce do you like? Uh, maple syrup for me every day of the week, though it's a bit. I guess today I can go high calorie. And he like he like gestures his plate to you. Today's a cheat day. I mean, <laughs> it's a cheat day. So would he? Would he want? The, does he want golden syrup? <laughs> no, he wants maple syrup. Wants golden maple, sorry, different. Maple, maple syrup. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little maple syrup butter free. Oh, that's the saddest thing that I've ever heard. He he looks I like at to you. think it gets there for like two seconds, and then the syrup spreads. Yeah, it just starts <laughs> to spread. <laughs> As you see, you see the, uh, as you're like pouring, you see his like, his like thumb that's like positioned on the top of the paper plate. The paper plate just folds in his hand and you look up because you're like, what, 5'10"? Yeah. 5'8", 5'10", somewhere in there? 5'10". You, you, you look up and you see his massive shoulders just rocking as like big juicy anime tears are just pouring down his face as he's just crying and he puts his hand on his shoulder and goes, thank you. Don't, don't, it's okay. I'm gonna take off my. Your shoulder like, hurts a little from how like tight he's like grabbing. Yeah, I take off. I take off my red scarf and I just dab his face. <laughs> it's okay. Good, it's okay. You listen. You just guy. you hold on to that for now. You can give that back to me later. Yeah, I'm gonna go get a room. And he just like walks off crying. Um, like, and you hear down the hallway. <laughs> oh, no. Did he say his name? Yeah, he said his name was William. William, William. that was okay. it. Yeah, William. Um, big. I, eventually, big all of your guys' interviews would finish, except for Corinne. I haven't done yours yet. Corinne, do do you not mention anything in your in your interview? Do you play um, anything down? Play anything up? Anything like that? I, knowing that the other two have pretty much said everything, I literally look at Officer Jan, and I say. Is there anything that you need filled in? Seems like you got the full story. No, your your friends seems like they told me a lot of what went on, but mm. I just always like to get everyone just to make sure all the facts always match up. Mm. Um, no, Pallet Town's grateful for what you guys did today. Now, um, your friend Vermilion is going to be compensated for their injuries, and if you guys are willing there is a reward to split for rocket members um but other than that i'm just gonna have to take your statements and pile them on top of 
the hundreds we're going to have back at the station. So what happened everywhere else? I did say I would answer some of your questions. Um, do you want me to call in your friends or you just want to tell them? Uh, yeah, they can. Uh, Seth. Yeah, Gavin. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Gavin, after you see William <laughs> down the like hallway, you hear <laughs> from like, that like guy's crying. Like, yeah. what did you say yeah. to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I just made a little maple syrup butterfree on his waffle. He's did, had a difficult day. Did is he? Did he? Is he? Does he hate butterfree or something? Is that that made him really sad? It's looked no, like no. He he's only he lost his his like main Pokemon and he's only left with a Caterpie. And I was like, hey, you know, one day that Caterpie's going to be a Butterfree, so I made a little Butterfree. Oh, I, I get the sentiment, but wow, that's yeah. a lot to stack Guys. on emotional. Like, yeah, you, as, yeah. as you Where hear are Corinne, you? <laughs> you hear call, Corinne calling, like eventually sticking her head out, uh, and you and you feel like a, a hand on each of your shoulders as Vermillion goes, that was a decent tactic, but it didn't work. Uh, let's just get this over with. And oh. Vermillion like pushes both of you in front of themselves as uh, Corinne is continuing to call for you guys. Are you coming too? I mean, you called for all of us, right? Yeah, come on. All right. When Vermillion uh, walks in with the two of them, um, their officer, Janet, at this point, has taken her hat all the way off and is kind of like just, she's even like undone the ponytail on the back of her head just to like relax for a minute now that she's done all of her interviews. So um, go ahead, take a seat. Uh, I've gotten all of your statements at this point, And as I was just telling your friend, um, until we can do a bigger investigation into this whole rocket mess, it's just going to be a bunch of, uh, a lot more accounts that go on top of the pile. Your guys are probably going to need for us to reach back out to you at some point, but that can be done over phone calls. So you don't have to worry about stopping. Um, and I was mentioning that um, from your accounts, you guys took down two of the rockets. So it seems like there's a bit of reward for any rockets that are captured. If you guys are willing to take that, some people turn it down sometimes. That's also fine. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that are we needing to schedule any counseling for any of you? Um, are you feeling mentally well? Check-ins like that. There's a guy. It's really important William, to the league. Just out there, I didn't get his surname, okay. but I, I, I'd like you, you can use my counseling on him. I'm good. Was he? Was he from the gym? Yeah. All of their counseling has already been scheduled. Good. They, goodness. they are going to be doing check-ins with the league for the next couple of weeks to make sure that they're all okay as we work to find their Pokemon. Guy needs to get his emotional reps in. Yeah, a lot of people forget that the league doesn't just look at the criminal stuff, but we want to make sure that our trainers are emotionally taken care of as well. So are any of you needing any counseling, any therapy? We can set up either some web calls if you're wanting to continue your journey, or we can schedule offices here in the city, though I feel like they're going to be pretty booked for the next few weeks. Could I get a potion for my leg? (laughs) I'll just point to my leg uh, that still has the bandages on it. Uh, I just realized we're in a medical center and I've not like, I can, I can ask Joy to, to set you up later today. Once she's uh, taken care of. Some I can, yeah, I can, I can check back on that later. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was like immediate, but from what you've told me, you two were responsible for capturing one grunt and one officer, um, putting the reward at 3,500 poke, um, split between the four of you. Um, but that's, oh. that's the, that's the reward you get for the two that you did capture. So we do appreciate that. Um, Thank and law you. enforcement, um, if you manage to run into this Graham figure again, we would be interested to speaking with him. Um, we can't, uh, while there are rules against stealing trainers, Pokemon, technically speaking, Rockets and other organizations similar to them have forfeited their status as citizens of the country. So it's technically not illegal to take their Pokemon, but it's something that's frowned upon. And from what um, you've told me, it seems like there's also a reward owed to him for capturing two of the other um uh, grunts okay yeah if we uh if we see him on the road we'll pass along the message okay i would um caution against interacting with this person too much though the story that you guys have given me suggests someone that's not comfortable with law enforcement um (laughs) and there are other organizations than the blue rockets in this region that you should keep an eye out for so please if you see this person we would be interested in talking to them Okay. Roger that. Other than that, um, Joy has already set up rooms for each of you. Uh, it seems like they're not going to run out of rooms. We don't have enough trainers that still have Pokemon that are injured that need to come here. So for now, you guys should be fine. Um, go ahead and stick around till at least tomorrow morning. Uh, probably don't leave town tonight. 
We just want to make sure that we've run everything through that we can. But other than that, I think we're we're done here. Awesome. Thank you for what you do, keeping us I'm for, safe. Yeah, from my side of things, I apologize. There are still some questions that I know that you all had that you wanted me to answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Like what happened at the gym and at the club? Well, I have to ask. I am going to let you all know this, but I ask that you not – speak about it too openly at the moment. We're still trying to do our investigation and panic could cause issues with the investigation. So feel free to talk about it amongst yourselves to console anyone who might've been there, but we ask that you don't go out and uh, spread details of the investigation to say things like the news or things like that. Of course. Okay. Um, With that, uh, matching up with the timeline of with what you all told me around the same time that rockets attacked here, we're still not aware of how they entered the city or, uh, through what means, though it is highly suggested that they came through over the river. Um, there was a massive storm, which currently ranges are out trying to track down the source of them. It is widely to believe, believed to be a Gyarados, especially with what you've told me that you've learned from the rocket grunts. Um, but from there, we know that rockets entered the city. The smallest group came here to the Pokemon Center as they expected it to be empty. Um, they set roughly 40 rockets to the gym and roughly 60 rockets to the Weedle Ways, um, of which we have captured about 34 rockets as far as I'm aware at the moment, counting the four that were here. Jesus. The Weedle Ways were able to the... Luckily, there were more than Greenhorns there. Several very experienced trainers were present um, at the beginning of the season and managed to fight off some of the Blue Rockets. However, the executive Azure of the Blue Rockets found his way to the Pallet uh, Town gym and challenged Leader Richie, who, when she says that, it's like a less than impressed tone that she takes when we're discussing that gym leader. Yeah. Um, challenged Leader Richie, and he was promptly defeated. You might see footage of that at some point over the next few days. Um, several trainers were recording. He was... His Kangaskhan was taken out in a hydro pump, and then he was also hit with a hydro pump. He is currently in urgent care uh, at the hospital. Um, So that is something that most people are not going to be aware of at the moment. After that, the gym trainers organized a surrender, um, and the Rockets took most of the Pokemon belonging to trainers there. They left behind things they considered weak. Um, So other uh, trainers that had, like, not exotic starters or maybe had just come into Pokemon that are not necessarily known to be some of the more powerful lines were left behind. But we're currently aware of several high-value Pokemon having been taken, um, including Leader Richie's own Kangaskhan. Um, We are also aware that um, there was a shiny Eevee that was taken. Um, But other than that, there are the most are just what you would expect from a bunch of eager beginning Pokemon trainers. As far as we're aware, there was only... Two casualties, one at the Weedle Ways and one at the gym, um, and several major injuries that were caused by the attack. And the casualties are? The casualties are um, there was one trainer who unfortunately passed away at the Weedle Ways. Um, they were struck by a hyper beam, and at the, um, at the gym there was unfortunately a Dodrio who uh, – took a Thunderbolt that was powered up by the storm. And unfortunately, that Pokemon did not um, survive. Who was the trainer so, of that Pokemon? Uh, I am unaware. I, I haven't interviewed them personally. Um, you know the but as far as I'm aware, that was one of the gym trainers. Um, yes. Uh, what? Uh, Gavin? Mr. Mr. Yeah. Newman? Um, was Was the hotel attacked? No, um, but we are sending uh, trainers who have been relieved of their Pokemon to the hotel for the night. Um, but no, as far as we're aware, the only three locations were the Weedleways, uh, here, and the gym. Um, all right, then. I'm going to go ahead, and I have lots more reports to file, and I have a few more, actually, that I'm going to need this room for. Um, some people weren't properly processed before coming over. So thank the four of you for the actions that you have done here today. Pallet Town owes you a great service, but remember, you are still new trainers. Try not to get involved with too many situations like this in the future. Of course. If you see danger, please run. That is our job to deal with this, and we want to make sure that 
our trainers stay safe until they've been given a chance to grow on their own. Okay. And yes. she collects her hat and tosses it over her hair. I was going to say, after she's out of earshot, I'd be like, we didn't want to. Like, we didn't go looking for this. Champions don't run. Uh, I mean, there's, there's times and places where running is definitely needed. Um, but I, I think in this case, we did pretty good, I would say. But not every situation you can take head on. Uh, I get what Corinne is saying. Vermilion speaks up, who's been quiet most of this time. I get what Corinne is saying. The champions don't run, but we're also not champions yet. Ooh, I like the yet. Optimistic. Fun. <laughs> <sighs> Vermilion. Today sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I'm not sure... Thanks for taking over when I got knocked out. <laughs> What's your guys' plans for after all this then, since I don't think Pallet Town Gym's going to be open anytime soon? <laughs> How do oh you feel God. about Cinnabar if you were to travel in that direction with us, if you want I to? I probably need a boat. I don't have anyone that swims. Um, we have a boat. We may have a boat. boat? We, uh, well, we can get we can get access to a ship captain who may let us hitchhike. I have mixed feelings about there. Cinnabar because on one hand, one of my Pokemon is very weak and he's my main battler to fire types. And on the other hand, I've been meaning to take um, my Zippo to Cinnabar to see if he can meet some older Magmar, maybe a Magmortar, see if that'll get him to evolve. Good idea. That could help. But not saying you have to do the gym while we're there, but you could. I mean, if you're uh, making it, the trip all the way out to Cinnabar, that's a that's a that's a way to not do the gym. Yeah. So I mean, you don't have to, but yeah. if Seafoam and Cinnabar are rough for my team right now, both of them. Gotcha. Corinne turns to Seth and Gavin. Maybe we really should just go north. Do you think we should just take the traditional route then? Yeah, I mean, yeah, either either route's fine. I don't think oh, there. Well, don't be- don't don't turn around on my account. It was put to us earlier that we should definitely take someone who's experienced and not green, like super green. Uh, Plus, like on the way there, green. you could always catch a water Pokemon that could help you too. That's my plan. Because- That's also my plan. I have a trusty good rod. I'll reach in my bag and just pull out the little <laughs> handle of it. <laughs> you guys like a good rod out of your bag. You yeah. guys both have dope water types. Um, going north or south is kind of the same difference to me right now because I mean I don't have any any answer to rock or fire. Did we did we already see what the announcement was for the new Viridian gym? Do we know who's leading that yet? Uh, I don't think they've announced that, as far as I know. But oh, then that, again, could that... a lot's happened today, so the news hasn't really been like. Okay. Can I get the news app on my Poketch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you they can do that. You uh, <laughs> pull up your Poketch um, and you just start searching for recent articles. And you see the top four articles are all live updates from Pallet Town. Oh, Blue Rockets attack. Yep, yep. Storm <laughs> hits Pallet Town. Um, Old news. Like, <laughs> down like four or five. Getting to about an hour before the attacks on Pallet started, you see an article entitled Tall, Dark Type, and Handsome. Um, that describes <laughs> the new Viridian City gym leader. Um, uh, one native to the Johto region, uh, gym leader Silver, uh, with his brilliant red hair uh, and his dark type team that he is now challenging first season trainers with. Ooh. Dark type. Yeah, he's a dark type gym leader. Tall, dark type, and handsome, huh? Looking at the screen, you see a guy maybe like in his like early 30s, very like square like traditionalist handsome uh like square jaw um like medium build but very much like live uh with like red hair that's kind of like pushed back um almost like like a j-pop star kind of like uh red hair um but um this is a trainer that's pretty well known in johto for anyone who's in kanto you probably would have heard about this trainer at some point um but for someone from Sinnoh, you definitely would not have heard of Silver before. I didn't make the international ring at all. What's with all these people 
just naming themselves colors. It's traditional. Why aren't you named um, a color? Red, <laughs> silver, vim- why aren't you named a color? Yeah, but I'm you, um, <laughs> the the photo itself includes an image of this trainer who is kind of sidestepped giving a command to his Pokemon, very much exuding this like low confident aura of like, of like not expressive, not like when you see a trainer, um, similar to like Lieutenant Surge, who's like very boisterous, very loud. This person gives that aura of like quiet and strong and like with their when with this action shot at the front of the of the front of the article, they're commanding their hound doom um to fight. Oh interesting. A hound doom. Uh, so it looks like dark types what's on the menu if we go north. I mean, I would have a better chance at Cinnabar. <laughs> oh. Well then, do we rest up and leave tomorrow? Um, yeah, I think uh Officer Jan wanted us to stay for the night and possibly a little bit further into the morning, just in case something else comes up. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, yeah. Sounds good. I'm going to go finish seeing if I can help anywhere else, and then we should get some rest. Same. I'll come with you. Okay. Um, Outside of actually helping in, like, the medical center, Nurse Joy does have, like, more tasks for you to do, getting bedding out for all those cots, things like that. And it is an exhausting afternoon. You're running back and forth. Um, I feel like, Gavin, you really, like, you, you start getting, like, hey, it's the waffle guy as, like, people are walking around. <laughs> uh, and there's kind of, like, this, like, rumor that if you want to get waffles, you have to go talk to, guy, to the guy with all the syrup still on his belt. Um, <laughs> so you end up just, like, making waffles for everybody over the course of the next couple hours. Syrup I want art! The- <laughs> I want art! <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah, Seth, you actually, whereas Corinne is more trained in like first aid medical stuff and was obviously asked to step to the side because Corinne isn't used to working on Pokemon. Mm-hmm. If you at all offer your services, Joy is very willing to get your assistance in the Pokemon section of things. Yeah. Um, I can... Because that can be done in an area where she's not giving medical attention to people. She yeah. does potion up your legs. So that starts the healing nicely. It'll be fully ready to go tomorrow. <laughs> I'm spraying like a, like a Rattata. I'm just like, I'm like. Spraying my leg at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I'm cheating out a couple um, of these potions on myself. And you're pretty correct, by the way. The Pokemon that are coming in are like kind of widely referred to as like garbage Pokemon, is what you're really helping. Like you're you're putting up like Rattatas, Caterpies, Pidgeys, Pokemon that are very common that were left behind by the rockets. Occasionally, you do get something more exotic from somebody who is fighting at the Weedle Ways, Mm -hmm. Um, but anybody that's coming from the gym doesn't have anything exotic or powerful. Yeah, I'll be making sure I take care of everybody and giving them all snacks when I can. Um, I will make um, some food for Bowie today, too, um, Mm -hmm. just at some point, Um, but I'm not specifying anything at the moment because it's just food. After a long day's work, it's probably like seven or eight by the time that you guys feel like you can slowly start to to like wind down. Um, Joy uh, mentions once again that your um, your poke catches um, and your like poke gears and things like that those all act as your room keys. Um, so you it's can like find your way to independent rooms. Yeah, essentially, you guys were the first like four or five people to like check in like Graham, the Vermillion, then the three of you. So all of your rooms are right next to each other on the same wing because you all checked in at the same time. Um, Heading up to those rooms, there is, it's it's, it's very barren. It's like single room with just enough room for a small desk, um, a bunk bed, uh, a closet, a mat in the corner for small Pokemon to sleep in and an independent, and um, an independent like toilet bath. But there's like, there's a separate shower area. If we go... Uh, Corinne's going to go ahead and head up to the room once everything winds down. She's super duper tired. But as she's going up there, does she pass by Graham's room? Yeah. Can she go? Door's in? still fucking ripped off its hinges, but yeah, it's there. Nobody's Ooh. using it at the moment because there's no privacy. Great. Can we do a little look see to see if anything got left behind or. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's split up and um, look for clues. Up and look at he left um, his Umbreon. 
heading up there, the door to the room itself is ripped off its hinges. You remember that that's where ostensibly a manky or a, a primate ripped it off its hinges to fight. Jesus. Um, yeah, they're heading through the like the little hallway that passes the toilet. It all seems normal. Getting to the main room, um, the bed is still completely made. It hasn't been slept in. The desk chair is pulled out slightly, um, but it looks like whatever was here was rapidly taken. Like the the notepad and like paper that comes on the desk is like askew. Um, it looks like maybe after Graham fought those guys, he ran up here, grabbed his stuff, and left. Is there? I don't. This is a reach. Is there anything written on the notepad or you know how when you really quick write something and you push down hard and there's like an imprint left in there? Is there anything? Yeah, as you as you walk up, the top page of it has been ripped off um, and it feels like something might have been hastily written on the pad. Can I do that? At some point. Trick where I like okay. s- slightly. <laughs> um, you can take you can take the the pencil that's there and you kind of like scribble on the corner taking that extra like graphite and then take your finger and like rub the powder over the top um with that words start to appear um there's only about four or five words on the page and you realize that this isn't like a um this isn't a like some secret thing that's been written. Mm -hmm. Um, You immediately feel guilty as you realize what is written in the top corner because it makes you feel bad because you remember some things about Graham growing up that were maybe not so well known by a lot of people. The the words that are written is, hey mom, comma, I'm leaving, and then it stops. And you remember that Graham grew up with his mother in the hospital for pretty much all of his life. She had some sort of illness that kept her bedridden and he didn't have a father. Um, so it seems like he was writing some sort of goodbye note that he hastily removed from this pad. I go ahead and I rip off the thing and I crumple it up and I stick it in my pocket. Okay. And I... Uh... You, as you're leaving, you'd probably glance by the trash can where the actual note is. <laughs> <laughs> you threw it away? <laughs> yep. He didn't even take it? He didn't finish it. He only got like four or five words in. Remember the whole terrorist attack thing? What were the Kinda words? <laughs> Writing. It was, hey, mom, hey, mom comma, I'm leaving. And then it Cue didn't the finish. door ripping up. And yeah, cue the happening. primate ripping into his room. Do I know if his mom is still in the hospital? You haven't kept up with Graham since high school ended uh, because he left high school a year before you did. You have no idea. I'm going to pull it out of the garbage. And I'm going to look at my squirtle that's on my shoulder. And I'm going to say, shh. Squirtle, squirt. Very confused as to what we're shushing about. Don't tell anyone, okay? Squirtle, squirt. (laughs) And I'm going to as best as I can, copy the handwriting and just put love you and then put a G on the bottom. Okay. And at some point before I leave tomorrow, I want to try and get this to either to his mom or to somebody who can get it to his mom. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. You, you, you easily enough can try Cause Graham does not have particularly complex or strong handwriting skills. Um, but yeah, you, you kind of fold that up and you slide that into a pocket and head off to your room. Does anyone else have anything they wanted to do before you guys ha- slept in for the night? Gavin's having a shower, for sure. First of all, he, he's gonna, he, he would have, before he went to bed, he would have gone and see William and been like, hey, buddy, I'm just, yeah, he's doing okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take this back. And he takes his scarf back. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, as you, as you go to find William, it's very hard to find him. Um, eventually you end up having to resort to ask Joy which room is his. Um, and you go up and you knock on the door and there is no answer. Hey, Will? William? Yeah. You hear from like behind you as you turn and see walking up ears William in like a freshly showered with new clothes on holding what looks like a basket in his arms. Hey, I was just, I was just coming to check on you. I was I was actually coming to see you. And he reaches in the bag and he pulls out your, your red scarf and he goes, 
I just thought I'd wash it when I was washing it. Oh, thank else. you. I was yeah, I was gonna do that if you if you hadn't. Thank you very much. Oh, I, uh, I appreciate <laughs> it. A basket full of red socks. <laughs> all the socks <laughs> is red. Full of, <laughs> full of pink socks. Clothing all bled over. No. Uh, like, now red is my aesthetic color. Yes, actually. <laughs> um, okay. Um. No. Yeah. But he goes. I really appreciate that. That was. It's been a really hard day, and that was really nice of you. Yeah, you're welcome. I just... Waffles always make me feel better about life, so... Good talk. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna head out. Hey, um, Gavin. Yeah? I'm, I'm waiting around this town for a couple weeks to see if they can help me find my Pokemon, but... This season's not over for me, so. I hope I see you out My there. My Butterfree's gonna kick your ass. I hope so. It, it won't, but I hope it puts up a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Listen. I don't. I'm not trying to talk too much trash. I just, you know, I mean, I. Ava here is a Starly. It just type advantages. I, you know. What's a Starly? It's like it's like a Pidgey, but in but, but for uh, but for Seno. Oh. All right. Well. I'm still gonna take you down. Just with my show him. <laughs> you, have it, <laughs> you have it right there. The problem is releasing Ava and a uh, of people at this exact oh, that's moment. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot about the Pokemon. I forgot about how your Pokemon are. Yeah, she don't will do that. Whoop his sad so, ass. Just, I've got. To, I've got to go and simmer. I've got to go and simmer her, and I'm. I'm gonna give her a little bath, and it's okay. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. You. You go down to the to the group baths where like several other guys are already sitting on stools, like showering, and then they go and they soak in the the larger baths. Um, oh, do our hotel rooms not have like an ensuite? No, no, no. So what I mentioned <laughs> is they have like the small like closet like toilet, and then to go to the showers you have to go to the group showers, okay. um, just because it's easier for like water bills. Um, and um, you shower up, you get all clean, Seth. I'm assuming at some point you also bathe, considering you spent a week on the road before this. Yep, 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 cool. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, you guys all get dressed in your PJs, get up. When I'm in my room, I fill the sink up to like. As as almost as high as it can go, just for a little bird bath for Ava. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> easily enough. Immediately, just like all the dust flakes from underneath the feathers, just make the brown it, it, make it brown immediately. Just yeah. like birds are disgustingly filthy creatures. I, I just want you all to be aware of that. Well, you gotta, yeah. I got a cleaner um, at every opportunity. <laughs> exactly. Um, but each of you gather to your rooms. Actually, at one point, Seth, um, it is asked by Nurse Joy as they're slowly getting more trainers. That because the rooms have two bunks each, if maybe you could collapse to also being in uh, in Gavin's room, uh, so that they could have another room to use for other trainers. There's a, a moment of hesitation <laughs> where I'm remembering how just uh, like adrenaline Ava was in the combat mm-hmm. and fighting. Like, yeah, I could I could do that. Yeah, that's fine, easy. I can. You know, it, it was kind of so lonely in the room. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, you have to end up going over to knock on Gavin's door because <laughs> Gavin also did not have, agree to this. <laughs> through, through the door, you hit Ava. No, pet, not do not wing attack right now. I not in the water. Look at those cots <laughs> in the in the in the gym place. I'm just like, could you just go sleep in a cot? If he didn't hear, I'm gonna give it like two seconds. If he didn't hear the knock I just did, I'm gonna go sleep on a cot. <laughs> One second. <laughs> I'm gonna go sleep on a cot. <laughs> <laughs> After he's and turned I, the corner, actually, that's when that's when Gavin's door opens. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll go down, <laughs> and um, uh, what I'll do is uh, instead of going just directly to the cot, um, I do want to um, just um, try to go back over to the little communication center uh, to try and call back to um, my family. But this time, I'll try and call my dad to see if he answers. But if not, just leave a message saying like, "Hey, I'm telling you this." In ca- if and let me know if he answers or not. Um, but, uh, if not the point I want to get with the message doesn't have to be role played or anything, which would be, Hey, I'm telling you this, we're potentially heading to Cinnabar. Mom's not okay with it a hundred percent, but we do have a trainer who went last year and did the circuit. Um, so we should be fine, but everything's like good. Obviously, uh, I hope she told you the thing about the, uh, the hydro pump and it was cool. Uh, anyway, love you. Bye. I got to go. Uh, so much cool stuff I'm doing here. Really busy. I said the spiel when I gave out the Pokemon. Okay, bye. And then just leave the message. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because it, it would not have answered after maybe like 30 seconds of ringing. You probably would have just let it hang up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I see your I see your tactic here. You're doing the classic asking the other parent for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> yes, yes. I see I see the tactic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you manage to find your way to a cot. Um, and as you go there, yes, Gavin. So uh, Gavin opens Pokebook. Um, okay. And he's going to go. The old people app. Good to know. Yeah, the old people app because that's the one his mum's going to use. So. Okay. Yeah, he's going to go marked safe from Pallet Town. <laughs> Thing, thing. All right, that can easily be done. Um, but Seth goes down to his cot. Gavin pulls into a bunk bed, and Corinne also pulls in to her bunk bed. Um, Bowie is left uh, asleep on your chest on the cot. Uh, Ava, I'm assuming, is left out, perches up on the top bunk. Um, and Corinne, you get to lay with your Squirtle for the first time as she kind of like curls up against you, um, as you sleep. As we're laying there, Corinne is just going, (sighs) Curdle, Lurtle, Surtle, Turtle? No, that's bad. Do you like any of these? As you're going like Turtle, you feel like your nose like start to like, like, like ache almost a little bit and you only sneeze. Oh, that was very accurate. Uh, very <laughs> accurate. As you uh, <laughs> look over at what made you sneeze, on the windowsill, there's like like uh, some succulent plants, but also some like cuter like little flowering plants. Oh. Um, and you see like little white flowers on the end of a little green plant that's been potted there. God, those are really cute. Mm-hmm. Mm. And your brain clicks. Squirtle. Birdle. Birdle. Myrtle. That's the kind of plant there. Myrtle. Myrtle? Squirtle, squirt! You like that? Squirtle, squirt. Myrtle. Uh, squirt! <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle the Squirtle. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. All right, Myrtle. Myrtle jumps up on the bed proper. And you guys curl up. You go to bed for the first time since this campaign has started, and we will end the episode there. Oh. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> no so it. much for joining us. No, Ava, for this it's episode quiet of time now. <laughs> Ava, quiet yes, time. Ava, I have a quiet time. I just realized that um, Graham had a whole room with a door busted open. If I'm sleeping on a cot, I might as well can just try and sleep, sleep in a room with a busted sense. door open. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of uh, Unbeatable, uh, a Canto journey. We are going to be getting back to you in a couple weeks. Don't forget to check all of our socials. And remember, if you enjoy seeing us on Twitch, uh, it goes up uh, over on YouTube and Spotify two days later on Saturday. So if you guys want to see that, go check out uh, the Unbeatable cast uh, YouTube channel or uh, go check us out on Spotify because that's where we're found on podcast uh, formats. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. And we will see you next time. I am unbeatable. I'll train until I meet my goal. If stakes are high, no, I won't fall because I am unbeatable. Earning every badge, whatever it takes, I'm gonna be the best trainer. You just wait, and I know the road ahead looks like it won't be easy. I am unbeatable. Standing by my side, got my friends with me to explore a whole world of possibilities. But no matter what the challenge is, we can overcome it together. Because we are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high, no, we won't fall because we are unbeatable. We are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal If stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable